Nino Brown boxing and I'm back in the building. Shout out to the LDBC. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. So I was sitting around this weekend and I was thinking about something. And that's something being the fact that one of the most popular divisions in boxing, that being the welterweight division, it seemed like a lot of these guys are not taking advantage of the opportunities that they have in front of them. And by opportunities, I mean opportunity for legacy, opportunity to establish yourself to the fullest potential. You know, we got some guys that do it, some guys that have actually had some great accomplishments when they're compared to their upper echelon of peers. But there's a lot of guys that seem like they, you know, they're remaining stagnant. They're okay with mediocrity. Not mediocrity in the sport of boxing in its entirety, but mediocrity for the elite fighters. And I feel like a lot of it's people in boxing right now with a little extra hard work a more strict diet, they can take advantage of these guys at welterweight not being um, not being motivated by legacy, not being motivated just based off of doing more, doing more than the next man. Now, by this, I mean we have guys in boxing that compete at 154 pounds that I believe they have the ability to make 147. Now, I'm not saying it will definitely be easy, but I've seen a lot of these guys in between fights. They definitely blown up. You know, you got guys with five foot nine frames, and they're not, you know, they're not big guys. They're not stocky guys, but they fight at 154. Now, for a, a guy, for example, would be Charles Hadley. I feel like Charles Hadley is too small for the 154 pound division, even though, I mean, he. He's done work up there, but you put Charles Hadley at 147, he gives guys like Keith Thurman problems. Some people may think, oh, Nino Brown boxing, you done lost your damn mind. Like, what you talking about? Charles Hadley ain't going to do shit. But Charles Hadley is a very skilled fighter. You know, he just got he just got his ass beat by a bigger Charlo, and it's as simple as that. I mean, we all know the Charlos had the potential to go up to middleweight and super middleweight at some point in their division. But you have a guy smaller in stature like Hatley. I look at it like this. If Sean Porter, yes, I understand he's shorter. But if Sean Porter can make 47, if Sean Porter can go down at a catch week and make 43, you got big guys like Jared Hurd, they can make 54. Charles Hatley can make 147. Now, I made a video about Austin Trout coming down to 147 previously. And some people say, you know, they don't think it can be done, this, this, and that. But I'm like... I don't know, guys. I really don't know. I mean, I understand everyone's body is different. But when you see guys out here, and I know it's a different sport, but to my understanding, cutting weight is cutting weight. If Conor McGregor was making 145 and you have Deontay Wilder getting down all the way to 214, it's not like Deontay Wilder is just some big, sloppy guy when he weighs in at like 220 or over 220, he, Deontay Wilder being a heavyweight guy all the way down to 214, and this guy doesn't even do road work. I believe a guy like Austin Trout can definitely make 147. Now, you have a, you have Austin Trout making Walter weight against the likes of Adrian Broner, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman. Um, I believe a Keith Thurman, I, I believe a prime, ready, and well-conditioned Keith Thurman is a 50-50 fight for Austin Trout and the rest of those guys I named, so Adrian Brown and Sean Porter and Danny Garcia. I believe Austin Trout will beat them all. I definitely believe he will beat them all. So it's just, I feel like it's a lot of opportunities at 147 that are there strictly simply because people aren't taking full advantage of it and a, a lot of these 154 pound guys that are on the smaller side of their division they definitely can capitalize off of it some people may call it being weight being a weight bully me personally i do not believe in that term i look at it like if you're disciplined enough to make the weight 
he's not a weight bully. It's a, it's as simple as that. You know, we all, if you don't understand, you can be put at a disadvantage if you cut too much weight. But if you can be effective at that weight, hey, I say go for it. I mean, the only way, put it like this. I say weight bullying is not a thing. Or you just make fights. All fights have a same day weigh in. Me personally, that's what I really would truly prefer a same day weigh in. And if it's no same day weigh in, then if you can make the weight, you can make the weight. It's as simple as that. But a lot of these guys at 154, the, the smaller guys, under six foot guys, dropping down to dropping down to um, 147 would be great. See, you even had Curtis Stevens talking about, even though it hasn't happened, I think I made a video about it before. Curtis Stevens talking about he wanted to come back down to 154. Granted, it hasn't happened. But as far as I can remember, Curtis Stevens used to fight. He fought at light heavyweight at one point in time. And he went down to 168 all the way down to middleweight. So, I mean, I don't think it will happen. But I feel like it's a great opportunity for a lot of guys in boxing, especially a lot of guys at 154, to make a name for themselves by coming down to 147 and make some noise in that division. But that's just my take on that, guys. It's Nino Brown Boxing. Shout out to the LDBC. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. I'm out.